In the early morning hours of January 17th, 2014, my dad responded to a call for of a house fire. Dad and his partner made an interior attack through the garage. And they'd only been in there a couple of minutes whenever the roof collapsed. What they didn't know about that house is that there was a lot of stuff in the attic. So when the roof collapsed, all of that stuff came down on top of dad as well. So he was trapped under the roof and all of the debris for several minutes. I was listening and then I heard the Mayday called. And then I heard him say that he was clearing the scene and going to pick up a family member. As soon as they were at the door, I knew what, what was wrong, or that there was something very serious wrong. Then they told me that he was going to be airlifted to Dallas. And knowing that he was going to be airlifted to Dallas, I knew that it was going to be bad. We were taken up to the sixth floor of Parkland, where the burn unit is. I have a very distinct memory of the doctor telling us that he felt like Dad had a good chance of surviving. And that was a, a comment that I, I held on to for several days. This is definitely not how I had life planned. Um, you know, am I happy with things? No, not really. It's not the way I envisioned living the rest of my life. Uh, but hey, it's the way it's it's the way it's going to be, and I just have to accept that and move on. During the ninety six days, it was it was probably a good thing that he wasn't aware of a lot of that was going on during that time because the pain was so intense. I wouldn't want him to remember that much pain. So I know one of the questions that Dad asked his pastor, Brother Robbie, was, you know, why why would this happen? And that he was being punished for something that he did. And, uh, and Brother Robbie asked me a couple of simple questions. Uh, you know, first of all, do you love Nicole? And I said, well, sure I love Nicole. She, you know, she means everything to me. And he said, okay, would you do anything to intentionally hurt Nicole or harm Nicole? And I said, well, of course not. I, would, I wouldn't do anything to hurt Nicole. And then he had this next point, which I have relived and said over and over again is, then why would your Heavenly Father, who loves you more than anything, do anything to harm or hurt you? Um, and that, that probably has helped me as much as anything. Um, I should have died in that fire. I shouldn't be here today. But God has something, in, in, something planned for me. He has something that He wants me to do. And now I just have to figure that out. So for us as a family, it's not about going back and doing things the old way, but trying to create a new normal for our family and getting a fresh start and starting over and figuring out what our new life looks like and not trying to make things look like they did before the accident. 100% we would not have gotten through this without our faith. I don't think you can be in the fire business or be a part of the fire family and not believe. After his 97 days in ICU, when he finally moved to rehab and I got to see him, one of our first conversations, he was talking about that he may have to, but he just just really didn't want to quit. And I said, you're not going to have to quit. We, we're going to find a place for you. And we have and we will. Um, he really misses getting onto the truck. And so just a couple of weeks ago, he actually went on a call and pulled hose and helped them in that way. And so that was exciting for him. One of my therapists uh, early on told me, you know, you need to learn how to fix a, fix yourself a sandwich. And I'm like, okay, if I fix it, how am I going to eat it? <laughs> then I just got to thinking, you know, hey, I'm, I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to do this. Denise has gone back to work, so I'm here by myself during the day, and I have to fix my own lunch. And I've learned how to fix my own sandwich, and I've learned how to pick up a sandwich and how to eat a sandwich. And he used to mow the yard all the time with a push mower. And so that was a challenge to learn how to start, full start, the, the lawnmower. 
while we were in rehab, we had a lot of these straps that were Velcroed together and made like a loop. And so we cut a little notch out into the loop and attached it to the pull part of the lawnmower so he can slip his hand into the loop and then pull. When I got to outpatient therapy, my therapist asked me, uh, said, what are your goals uh, for outpatient therapy? Uh, and I told Gary, who was my physical therapist, I said, well, I want to run again. And I was able to accomplish that goal with the help of Denise and Nicole and Dana, my trainer, and Gary, my therapist. I told Dad if he ran another 5K, I would run it with him. Dad told me, uh, I think in February, he said, I have it, I have it picked out, and I want to run the 5K in April. And I thought, I can't run a 5K in two months. And so in April, my mom and my dad and my husband and I all ran a 5K together. That there is life after your accident. Uh, it's not going to be the same. Life will never be the same for me like it was before. Uh, but it's going to be the new normal and it's going to be my normal and it's going to be my life. And, and I'm going to live it to the fullest. I would want Dad to know that he has always been a wonderful dad to me. And that he's always been there for me. And that I hope that um, I can be the same kind of parent that he was for me.